moving right along. We've polished up our flywheel a little bit here. We'll do a little better job later when we clean up all this. We'll, this will all be just sharp and shiny as can be when we're finished. These parts are finished machining. And now we're going to do the cylinder here and the uh, rod and the piston, which will be made out of this chunk of steel. We'll start with the cylinder. And let's see this. We want to find the square side. The square side on here. This is extruded aluminum, and my theory is that as it comes out of the from being extruded, this, the flattest side of the square side is the side that it rests on while it's cooling down and getting ready to roll. These all look pretty good. We'll take this one. So, first thing we want to do is plaster that with some of our dye. That's some handy stuff, but it sure can uh, leave marks on your skin, too, I've found. That's okay, because then when you go in the grocery store, all the ladies think you're a machinist. They like machinists because they think the machinists can make a good living for them, and then they can stay in the grocery store all they want and spend all the money they want to without repercussions. That's my theory on that, too. Okay, at this point we've got our cylinder block squared up in the four, four jaw chuck. I'm going to give you a little shot here of how it's ended up. And our next procedure is going to be to paint the end of it and face it. Nice and smooth and clear and ready to bore the cylinder into. So we'll put our dye on here like we always do when we're facing something. At least that's what I gather from what I've learned so far. Then we'll cut that down just until the dye disappears and then we know we got it all. Pretty slick those Americans. They figure out how to do this stuff. I suppose the Germans did it first. Okay, we've got to get our tool holder back on and get our tools ready to go to face it. Got our tool post tools back on again. We're ready to start facing. So let's crank her up. Yep, that'll work all right. So I got a bit of a ring there. I don't know what that's from, but I'm going to leave it. I can polish that out later if, it, if I start thinking it's a problem, which I don't right now. I'm getting tired. I always have the pilot hole for the cylinder block, for the cylinder in the cylinder block. 
quarter inch by 1.625 deep. So we'll continue progressively larger bits till we get to a half an inch. And we might use a reamer on that last half an inch if we've got room on this little lathe. That does it for the cylinder bore. We took it, took out to half an inch, bit by bit. And that should do the job for us. I'd like to ream it to 0.501, but my reamer won't fit in there. I may, uh, I may end up chucking it up over the mill. And reaming it out over there. Just for grins. Okay. That takes care of that. We'll take it out of there now and we'll face it. A boring bar to go a thousandths over. 0.501 here. Thousandths over half an inch. It's too long. Too long to fit in my. Uh, Lathe, my little bitty lathe over there, 10 inch lathe. So I'm gonna do my boring here in the mill. Check the length out, it'll work just fine. Okay, first of all, you know, we gotta find our, do our edge finding trick, we'll get right to the center. Then we have to offset 125 thousandths in order to. Move the cylinder up a little bit. Okay. Oh, man. Inward. You see her snap into place on the center, center finder, edge finder. Six one oh, that's the exact center. Right there, right on the button. Okay, our bores, boring bars mounted. We have to go uh, one point sixty-five feet. That's our cylinder. Stroke. Okay. Fire it up. Put it down slowly. Do it for the bore. Clean that off. Have to put a few more holes in our cylinder and then we'll have it. Need to put the port in there, we need to put the mounting screw. Well, that did it for the bore, all right. Here's my theory. You know, that screech we heard, that really wasn't a good deal. I didn't think it was at the time, but I thought, ah, what the heck, we'll finish it up anyway, it's already too late, so we did. And what we ran into there, I think, was that since we didn't square that block up before we started, 
we were at a little bit different angle in the lathe than we were in the, in the uh, mill. And the drills went in one way, and then when we mounted it up and ran the boring bar in, it went in a little bit crooked, a little bit different way. And that screwed up the bore, I think. It would probably still work, but it wouldn't be wouldn't be as good as we'd like it to be. So we're going to build another cylinder. More about that later. Anyway, we uh, we uh, decided that one of these times we'll square it up and see what we can do with that, play with that. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and finish this one, and we'll see how it turns out. We're in position for the mounting hole. That is a .875 from the bottom, from the bottom of the cylinder, and it's uh, number 21 drill, which we need the whole size to tap 1032 mounting screw in, and it needs to be a quarter of an inch deep, so we'll set our z-axis to zero, and we'll go down 0.250. We have our super duper tap magic for aluminum here that will grease up that hole for us. There we go. Fire up the mill. We got our 1032 plug tap in there. Try a new hole out with a 1032 screw. So one that'll be put in there as a mounting screw later. Yeah. Okay. We bottom tapped it. So we got a quarter inch there to grab. So we're finished with that one. Now we need to put our steam port, in our case our Pressed air port through to the cylinder at uh, 1.5 inches. That's a quarter inch hole. So let's move on up to uh, 1.5. Okay, there we are at 1.5. So we'll chuck up our quarter inch drill and we'll drill our steam port. All the cylinder's finished except for cleaning it up. We did face it on the top. We got it down at the specified length. We're a little short. It's supposed to be 1.875. I'm trying 1.875. And we've got 1.872 to 873. So that's just the way it goes. That's close enough, like I say, for government work. I don't think we've seen calipers or not. That's we'll try and rent measure for you here. 1.77. She's off a bit there. 1.871. 1.72.5. Kind of depends on how much pressure you put on it and where you get the calipers on there at. Sideways or whatever. Okay, well, there's the bore in the back. Cylinder walls are cleaned off. It's ready to fit the piston in there when we build the piston. And we'll clean it up. That's going to fit. Uh, that's going to fit right on here like that. Let's get our get our mounting screw out of here. Cut here. That maybe is. So I get my elbow in the way. But put that through here. 
here on this side. Here's where the top of the piston will be up this way, top of the cylinder. Like that. I will face this board too before we're finished. Okay, then you tighten it to a degree with that. So, so the piston will go up and down in here like so. And this will go back and forth as the crank goes around here. The crank will out here with the flywheel on the other side. You're going to look like an engine. Oh, so yeah, this remember is a press fit. So we we'll press that off the arm and press them ready to go. And as that goes around, the wheel's on the proverbial bus. I'm trying to get it to stick there for that full little demo here. Yeah, and that'll be in there like that. As that goes around, like so. Piston rod fits there and it'll be cranking that piston up and down in there. There's no wrist pin or there'll be no movement on the piston that's solid. That's why the cylinder will go back and forth like this. A much simpler design. And that's going to do the job, folks. That will do her. After we clean all these pieces up. Kind of getting out of my frame of reference here, but that's what it's going to look like, kind of, until we make improvements. To spiff it up a little, we'll do that when we're all finished, make sure it works. All right, then. Next step, piston.